Hello, this is a new episode of the Meet the Author series. This time we do it about the right to be erased, the right to be forgotten, so the subject of the Google Spain case. An interesting topic, I think, for everyone who likes data protection and also in the context of data protection. It was a good session. It was based around the thesis of Dr. Jeff Ausloos, who wrote his thesis last year in Leuven at the university and who defended it there successfully. His main thesis is, and now I turn to you, Jeff, uh, was about empowerment. The right to erasure or the right to be forgotten empower, empowers the, the data subject, empowers people, individuals. Uh, there's a lot to say about it, about empowerment. Do you really think that this is the right tool to empower people in a society where big companies know a lot about you? So I think um, the right to erasure and to be forgotten in Article 17 of the GDPR does um, an interesting, a great job actually in, in uh, providing data subjects with the tools to, to control their personal data, but perhaps not in the way that people would think. If you look at it more closely in Article 17, you see that it is filled with references to other provisions throughout the GDPR and also outside of the GDPR. And actually, the, the legal analysis uh, of whether or not data should be erased uh, or not will take place in those other provisions. And so you will see that um, actually a lot of those cross-references have obligations to erase. Uh, so actually what Article 17 does is not necessarily... Um, uh, is not necessarily a tool for empowerment as such, but more a symbolic provision that centralizes and clarifies uh, and uh, um, uh, emphasizes these data, data subject empowerment. Yeah. I have a second question, and the last question, we don't make it so difficult today. Jeff, we discussed about the right to erasure, a right of the data subject, a right to have access to his data, uh, but also about technology. And you had interesting views about this because you claimed basically, if I remember well, that the right to data subject is not always helped by technolo technological solutions. The technology can work either way. It can help, but it can also make life difficult for the data subject. This is a very loaded question, of course. Uh, technology, data protection, this is a love-hate relationship. Uh, as part of my PhD project, I did some empirical research as well with, with colleagues um, filing data subject rights with real life um, uh, data controllers. And, and in some cases, we, came, we stumbled upon this weird argument from controllers uh, that they essentially argued that um, data protection by design, uh, so measures they take to ensure that your data is safeguarded, they use those arguments to block your right of access, for example. Uh, so an, an, uh, a, a clear illustration would be Apple Siri, uh, your Siri data. When I ask a question uh, to Apple Siri, that information, that voice recording is sent to Apple's servers uh, and stored for up to two years. Now, Apple says uh, we cut the link between the device and your Apple ID and this voice recording. So this is a great data protection by design measure. Uh, Apple is now also positioning itself as a data protection and a privacy champion uh, when, comparing, uh, when compared to its rivals, uh, Google uh, and Facebook. Uh, now, of course, it's not hard to see how this argument is a bit problematic because, not in the least, because uh, this voice data that they store for up to two years is stored together with your contacts with your calendars, with your iTunes playlists. Uh, Google also has several patents of voice recognition, so it would be fairly trivial to re-identify you. It's not because they didn't put in place the infrastructure to uh, connect uh, that voice data back with you, that uh, there's no risk of doing so, especially when you consider the fact that there might be a data breach, for example, or the government might come knocking to get access. Um, so, so what we're arguing for in, in this separate article actually, but which also uh, ties back to my own research in my PhD, uh, is, is, is basically that you f uh, need to find a balance between uh, data protection by design and accommodating data subject rights. I have with me Joris van Hoboken. He is a professor here at the VUB. 
someone who was at the audience today, a very active part of the audience, because it's a subject that interests him. He was very critical on the Google Spain case and on the right to be erasure and on data protection as part of our system of protecting individuals, also in relation to other individuals' rights, like the freedom of expression. Joris, how do you look at this thesis on the right to erasure, on the discussion we had, and also on the impact of data protection on uh, our freedom of expression? So I think like the discussion was a very balanced discussion and it was very informative and I think one of the things that really helped a lot was that there was a lot of discussion about like the exercise of, raw, of data subject rights more broadly, right to erasure with respect to different types of organizational data practices. And I think uh, data protection has made a big leap with the GDPR in like strengthening these, these rights and that's a very good thing. I've always been a little bit worried about the push for the uh, application of uh, data protection uh, to some particular context that I don't think it's very well suited for, like to deal with the types of questions that emerge in these contexts. And, and the Google Spain judgment was the right to be forgotten decision with respect to search engines was a really good example of that. I think in that situation, uh, data protection pretended to have an answer uh, to a very complex configuration of questions. Uh, and I think data protection wasn't very well suited to deal with the question of how to balance with other interests, freedom of expression, uh, the importance of uh, archive news uh, to be found by people also when you search for uh, people's name. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's something that uh, I think uh, I, I try to also bring into the discussion at some point today. Uh, but generally speaking, I think there was, uh, there was a very good discussion about you know, how to how to, uh, how to uh, look at the exercise of rights in the current environment where data has become uh, so important.